Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. Well folks, we are on to part six of our series on a layer or layout building and uh, we're going to go through today in today's lesson the uh, uh, vertical matrix or the horizontal matrix. We did the vertical matrix last week. So we're going to continue on with the vertical matrix and I believe next week we're going to get into the, uh, the, the mega tree because there's always some confusion of how should I build my mega tree and um, I want to help kind of make it really stupid easy for you to do this. So uh, before we begin today, folks, this video is brought to you today by the PPD Sequence Club. When you join the PPD Sequence Club, members receive huge discounts and save thousands and thousands of dollars off of their everyday pixel and holiday purchases that they're going to be putting into their display. So uh, if you know, if you're familiar with companies like Boscoyo Studios, Wired Watts, uh, CFOL, Jdition, um, Wizards of Wire, Cool Tees, CCL Controllers, Pixel Sequencing, Showstopper Sequences, Holiday Sequences, uh, Scott LED, I mean the list goes on and on. Check out our affiliate page and you can see who some of these uh, affiliates are offering huge discounts and savings to our members by signing up for the PPD Sequence Club, the only club that pays you back for its membership. Well, folks, let's go ahead and begin with what we see here on the screen, which is going to be our uh, next item up for bid. We're going to click on, I'm going to reset this, there we go. I'm going to select click one time and I'm going to create a new matrix. Now before, uh, before when we created a matrix, we did a, a vertical and we changed it. Natively, natively uh, verti uh, matrices are built horizontally, so up and down, um, or, oh my goodness, natively matrices are built uh, left to right in X lights. They're called horizontal and they're called horizontal for a reason because they go left to right. So if we right click and we go to node layout, you're going to see the default layout of a matrix is going to be uh, 16 nodes tall by 50 nodes wide. So 15 or uh, 16 strings of 50 pixels and the way this is configured right now notice that there is a blue and a green line the the each segmentation here indicates that that's one connection to a pixel controller so this is output number one this is output number two this is output number three etc 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 if that is how you're doing it with a 16 um, output controller so let's walk through and we will show you exactly how we're going to set up some matrices uh, that I have going on in one of my layouts. Um, so, uh, spoiler alert, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to build these a little bit differently, but the, the way that these are built in x lights are very similar. So, um, so yeah, let's begin. Um, what I want to do is I want to do a standard matrix. Now, if you're familiar with the Boscoyo Studios uh, Monster Matrix panels or um, his two-inch spaced uh, uh, Boscoyo Mesh uh, Matrix panels, those uh, come in a variety of sizes and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a two-foot, a, a two no, I'm sorry, a, yeah, a two-foot matrix by this eight foot matrix. And uh, in my layout, these are gonna be on the wall here. Now you, you may be more familiar with a four foot by eight foot matrix. That may be something that you're going to do. Uh, I don't have the room on my front wall for a four foot tall matrix, but I do have room for a two foot tall. So uh, once again, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend going to the Boscoyo Studios website and getting the detail information that you need in order to create this. So I'm going to stumble around here a little bit and find the matrix panels. Uh, I don't see them here, so I'm just going to put matrix. I'm going to type matrix in his search. Click on that. See, I told you we'd find it. So um, there, there's a number of these that you may consider. So this is, he has different ones called mesh. I personally am going to be using the Chroma Mesh 2 inch. And uh, I think this is the 4 by 8 sheet. Um, this is the 2 by 8 sheet, 
with two inch. So this is the one that I know I'm going to do uh, in using the display. So what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for the exact details on how to uh, how much pixels I need and the density that it needs to be. So if we look here, this is here's all of his information, and he says available in black and white. Two inch half size mesh. 2 by 8 creates a 12 by 48 matrix. So that's what we're going to build is we're going to build a 12 by 48 matrix that tells me I need 576 pixels in order to do this. So I'm going to keep that off to the side here and I'm going to remind myself that I have I have obviously I have tw I need 12 by 48. So how am I going to run those pixels? Let's let's do a little bit of quick calculation here. If we have 48 inch or a, uh, 12 by 48, 48 pixels wide by 12 tall, I need to be able to, to within my controller limits and my pixel limiting, uh, I like to run roughly 100 pixels per output. So to me, it makes more sense to me if I build them with one one string of 100 pixels. Now I use 5 volt. If you use 12 volt, that's fine. You can use uh, however however many strings per strand that you like. You could probably put 150 on each string without power injection. You could probably put 200 on uh, each one. So if it all depends on on your build. So I'm not going to limit you on how you do it, but I'm going to make this as simple as possible for you to understand. So what we'll do is we'll do some simple math. I'm going to I'm going to take 48 times 2 which is what's going to be total on one string per output for my controller. This makes sense for me. And I need 96 pixels per string. The other thing I need to calculate is if I'm going to use 96 pixels, I'm not going to use 12 strings. I'm only going to use 6 strings. So that's for the, those are the physical numbers that we're going to calculate into here. So if I remember, we're going to use, um, we're going to use 6 strings and we're going to use 96 pixels per string and now here's where it gets confusing so now we have one two three four five six six strings down here on our model but now we're going to make it so that there are 12 strings remember we're, we're working with 12 strings on the matrix here and I am going to change this strings per strand remember we're going 96 so here's our 96 so that means we're going out once and then we're coming back once. We're, we're going out and returning one time. We're, we're doing one zigzag. So we're going to use two strands per one string. As soon as we change this, this should be a 16, by, or I'm sorry, a 12 by, uh, 12 by 48 matrix. So if I right click here and I look at the node layout, this should be set up in a manner that is, once again, Bottom, it does start on the bottom left. Now I didn't go over that. It's auto defaults to the start location at the bottom left. And it's going to go from bottom to top. And each of these is one output. So the blue here is output number one. The green is output two. The blue is output number three, four, five, and six. So this matrix is only going to take up six outputs on my controller certainly I can fit more in there than that and the nice thing is is that um, we're looking at a very even number if we go back here and we think oh there's 12 there's 12 outputs how do I do or, uh, 12 12 lines how do I divide that up so that I can only use three outputs so let's say we do use three outputs let's say you're going to take three times four outputs it equals 12 outputs let's say that we're going to go instead of using 94 pixels or 96 I'm sorry uh, let's get the calculator out here L let's let's not do that let's do the 48 per line that's one line is 48 multiply that by 3 so multiplying that by 3 equals 144 so let's go back and make this so that we get one line out then one line back and then we'll make another line out and this will be one two three output or uh, three uh, three rows per one output so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna change this up so that now we we cut it in half remember let's let's go back and, and explain the mathematics again because I know math is in everybody's strong suit um, we're looking at the uh, at the 12 
and we're going to use four outputs. So that means we're going to have four strings. We'll put four strings here. And each output is going to hold 144 pixels, 144. Now, remember what we did. We went over once, we went back once, and then now we're going to go back over a third time. So we're going to have three strands. We're going to go three times up, down, and back. We're going to zigzag three times. And once we change this, we have the same definition. If we right click and we look at the node layout. And let's go ahead and blow this up a little bit. Now you can see we have multiple. We have one, two, three, three lines. And we have blue on the first one, two, three. Then green on the next one, two, three. And blue on the third one, two, three. And green on the fourth. So these are four outputs with 127, or I'm sorry, 144 nodes. I, I, I got ahead of myself there. And uh, I, I, that's because I'm not scrolled all the way over. See? 144 nodes per output and if you're running 12 volt guess what you probably don't have to power inject heck if you really 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 want to get crazy let's go ahead and change it up again what if we did um, what if we did three strings what if we did three strings and we know we know that uh, we have 48 so we we want to do 48 times four strands instead of three. Oops, I just got rid of everything. 48 times four is 192. So let's go ahead and bring back up X lights here. And 48 times four is 192. So now that we have 192, that means we're gonna use three ports, but we're gonna run zigzags four times. So now, once again, we have our standard matrix. We have, uh, let's look at our node layout. And now you'll see if you're running 12 volt pixels, maybe if you dim them down, you might be able to run this entire matrix. This is 500, uh, 500 and, um, oh, I got it over here. This is uh, 578 nodes total and 192 per output, you're only using up three, and you probably wouldn't power inject maybe if you were going for really bright, but um, if you dim it down, it may work. I don't know, it's something you have to test, test in the real world. So folks, this is uh, pretty much the best that I can show you here. Once again, uh, if you want to change your start location, you're welcome to do so. Uh, all you have to do is click where you'd like it to start. Now, in my case, it really makes sense since I, I don't have a pixel controller at the bottom. I would probably start at the top left because my pixel controller would be off to the left here and feeding data this way. I'd probably need, I have actually, I'm going to need three of these. These are going to sit right here. Copy, Control C, Control V to paste and uh, they're gonna sit right here just like this, control V, and they will go the, across the front wall here on my display. So folks, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hit the like button if you like the video. Make sure you click the red subscribe button in the bottom right of the screen that you see. And uh, don't forget, we have an awesome Facebook community which you should totally join. Finally folks, if you like the content we do here, at Pixel Pro Displays and it's really helping you, please consider supporting us here at the channel by subscribing to the Pixel Pro Sequence Club just for one month. And it shows your support for this channel and the content that we continue to provide freely for the entire x -Lights and hobbyist community. Thank you for joining us, folks. We will see you in the next video. Down through the chimney with those and me. Sam, and every time it rains, it rains. And